Hello. Welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is an attorney, William Mahan. Uh, Bill has a law office currently in Campbell, California, soon to be San Jose, California. He's been practicing law for 30 years. Uh, he has a master's in taxation degree, uh, LLM from Golden Gate University, and a JD degree uh, from Santa Clara University. His practice focuses on estate planning and probate and business planning and real estate issues. Today, Bill and I are going to be talking about some legal considerations related to short sales and foreclosures and loan modifications. And related to that, we want to caution you to seek legal advice. So this is just sort of an introduction, uh, a way to get into this area, and we're hoping into a continuing conversation with your own advisors. Bill, thanks for being with me here today. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, well, let's get into this uh, first. Let's talk a little bit about loan modifications. What happens when somebody gets a loan modification? And how do you go about doing that sort of thing anyway? Right, a, lo a loan modification is when uh, a borrower goes back to their lender and is uh, trying to get some kind of change in the terms of the loan. Uh, usually this happens because the loans that were obtained have uh, increases in the principal in the uh, payments over time, so they increase the amount of payment that has to be made. And so people have these loans that are coming due, so to speak, and they can no longer afford them or something maybe has happened in their life and their career and they're not uh, able to afford the same level of, of mortgage that they had before. So they go back to the lender and they are trying to get a, a change in the terms. And so the kinds of things that you would try to change would be the length of the term of the loan or the interest rate, try to get a lower interest rate, or even perhaps get a reduction in the principal or some combination of those things so that the payment is more affordable for the, for the borrower. Right. So how is that working out as far as people getting these adjustments? Um, it isn't really working out very well. I think most people have have heard about the problems. There are people that get modifications. It's unfortunately not, not most of the people who are trying to get them. It's a very long process. You have to uh, supply a lot of information to the lenders. Um, and oftentimes what they'll give people is a trial modification period. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes before they'll even talk to people, you have to quit making payment on your mortgage. And that gets you into a default situation. But that's like I say, unfortunately, been sort of the procedure that's been happening up to now is before the lenders will actually talk to people about modification, they have to look like they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're already in a distressed situation, um, and if you uh, are able to get a trial modification, then for a period of months you will get a reduced amount that you have to make every month to stay in the program and continue to, to supply information to the lenders so that they can consider a permanent modification. And unfortunately, uh, you know, most of those are not turning into permanent modifications. The ones that do uh, are a good, a good result for those people. But during the process, many people get frustrated. Many people just don't comply completely. The lenders tend to be a little slow in getting things done. And, and what's going on in the background is a foreclosure process because most of these people quit making payments for a while. That process is also underway. So that's happening in the background, and so sometimes people get to the point where the modification is still in process, and they're getting their notice of default, they're getting their notice of sale, negotiating with the lenders, trying to get that, to keep that from happening. So it's a difficult process for people, and, uh, but to the extent that it's working, it works pretty well. It's just unfortunately not most people. Yeah. Now, I heard that, and I don't know how much familiar, so I'm raising this out of the air for you. Sorry about that. Uh, but the Attorney General seems to be giving a lot of attention to the people who are providing services in that, this area. Do you have any thoughts? Or yeah, there has been a lot, not just with the Attorney General, but with the State Bar, for example, California State Bar, because a lot of people, whenever people are, are in trouble uh, and they become more or less desperate because of their situation, um, they're sort of uh, susceptible 
to people who will prey on them. And so uh, people have come along and started these businesses saying that they are going to help people get modifications of their loans, that they are experts in getting modifications. And the, the things to watch for are people who aren't licensed, people who um, ask for fees up front to do that. Sometimes there are very high fees. I think most people have heard about this by now because it was such a, a problem that it became a news story. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, the, the, you know, it's been cracked down on by the Attorney General's office and the D District Attorney's offices and the State Bar of California when the, whenever there were any attorneys involved in these kind of things that they were, they were being pursued for that. And as I understand it, you, you're prohibited from even getting an advance fee anymore uh, for th right. these services. Right. And, and realistically, you know, some of that, some assistance that people can get in modification is useful, but for the most part, what you're going to be able to do, you, you're going to be able to do yourself with your lender or get the advice of your attorney or your accountant as far as things like tax consequences that we're going to talk about today as well. <clears throat> but uh, you don't really need to have somebody get you a loan modification because they're probably not going to be any more successful at that than, than you would be yourself. Hmm. Okay. What is a foreclosure compared to a trustee sale? Well, we refer to both as a foreclosure. Okay. But well, what we really are talking about are two different things. There's a, there's a judicial foreclosure, meaning you go through a court process. So the, the lender goes to court when somebody is in default on payment on their mortgage, and they go to court and they foreclose on the property. Mm -hmm. That is almost never done in California with residential property. Mm -hmm. for reasons of complication. It's, it's harder for the lenders to, to go through that process and not as certain for them to go through that process. So most of the time, probably 98% of the time with residential property, they're going to utilize what's called a trustee sale. And that's because the mortgages uh, in California are secured by a deed of trust. And that means the deed of trust names a trustee and the trustee has the power of sale. So if somebody's in default, the trustee can after the procedure is followed, sell the property and the money that comes from the sale goes to the lender. If there's anything extra over and above the loan, it goes to the, to the uh, owner of the property. Okay. So can you explain any more details about the trustee sale process or do you feel like you'd... No, the, no I can. The process is, um, first of all, the, the borrower is in default. So the first thing that a trustee, or not trustee, a, a the holder of the note, which may be different than the lender, okay. lenders loan money, and then the mortgage gets transferred Sold, yeah. and you end up with somebody holding it. So the holder of the note will send out a, a notice of default eventually. Then uh, These days this takes a very long time to happen most of the time, but that's the first real step in the process. So the, the borrower is behind on payment, the uh, holder of the note sends out a notice of default, mm -hmm. and then there's some more legislation that has been passed recently that requires lenders to, to communicate with the borrower and maybe offer loan modification procedures at least before they can take the next steps, which would be things like notice of the actual date of sale of the property. <clears throat> and then if the borrower hasn't done anything to, to remedy the problem after a certain point in time, that becomes moot mm -hmm. and the uh, trustee can sell the property on the date of sale. Okay. So is this what they talk about when they're saying the property was sold on the courthouse steps? Yes. That's <laughs> okay. What's a deed in lieu of foreclosure, and is it a better alternative than a foreclosure or a trustee?